All I can say is, wow, the couple who brought their issues into court today barely knew each other, got married for all the wrong reasons, have only been living together for three weeks, and they are surprised that they're having problems. You are about to see how two people stumbled their way into divorce court. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Clementina Rachneva and Josiah Duncan. The two of you have been together two years, married six months, but only living together for three weeks. Explain how that happened. <laughs> Ms. Rachneva, I'll start with you. Well, I mean, technically, we lived together before four uh, for about two weeks, so really that's five weeks. Okay. <laughs> I, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. How come you've spent so little of your married life together in one place? Uh, because uh, we lived in different cities and I was busy packing. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, for after six we months? After you we were got packing? How, many, um, how much clothes do you have? A lot, a lot, a lot. And I just only brought a small part of them. No, in, in all seriousness, uh, we were living apart because I was um, in Vegas and he was in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And um, the weather's really good in Vegas. <laughs> uh, Mr. Duncan, let me ask you, why... Uh, it, apparently, this started out as a long-distance relationship, correct? No, it did not. No. Help me out. Uh, we actually met at a mutual friend's place in Seattle um, and hit it off. And we actually spent every day for the first year that we were together, together in Seattle, mm. where she was living. And um, her parents ended up moving down to Vegas. She moved with them uh, to be closer to LA for right. her acting, modeling career. Right. Um, and uh, I ended up staying in Seattle for work. I'm right. a DJ, promoter, producer, whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just kept it long distance for... Right. Uh, and how did, how did the issue of marriage get raised? Well, Who said what to whom, when, and how did you think it was going to work out with you in two different cities? Well, for a while I was going down and visiting her pretty often. Right. And uh, uh, it got to the point where I was going down once a month and, like, mm -hmm. once every two months. And... It came to the point where either we needed to take another step and, you know, have that commitment and really go for it, or it wasn't going to last. So you wanted to make that move, because exactly. you could see that things were getting strained, you weren't being able to see each other often enough. So you got married. Did you make plans to, to, to come together in the same city when you got married? Yeah. What were the plans that you made? Um, we made plans to save up money and move in together at the beginning of summer. In which city? In Seattle. In Seattle? Yeah. Okay. And did that work out? Um, I mean, more or less. We made it by fall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, ooh, okay. When did the trouble start? Um, I suppose... Three, uh, no, the trouble, the trouble started before we got to Seattle with my uh, the car breaking down. So we were stranded um, in Arizona with um, a broken down car, and um, that kind of created a lot of tension. A broken down car? Yes. I mean, they break down all the time. I mean, that. It, it, why did? They, why was that a a big deal? I mean, you, you, your car broke down when you're. Stranded, you're, you know, you're kind of um, upset and things put you over the edge easily. You know, when you first get married, you cool anywhere <laughs> if he's there. You know what I mean? Oh, oh we're stranded. We're in the, you know, I remember, remember we got caught in the rain once and all of the rides at, at, at Cedar Point and we were hiding under... It was cool because he was there. I mean, what... I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> well, I mean, would you want to? Like, I, I get it. That's really cool for, like, the first two hours. Then it's not that cool. You know? <laughs> really? Like, I mean, yes, because you're on the side of the road in middle of nowhere with, like, snakes and bugs and things. And 
Yes, it's really adventurous and cool for like two hours. Woohoo, we broke down. But, that, but, that, but, but, but you get over that. I mean, life is full of dumb stuff that happens to you. I want to know what, what started going wrong with the marriage. Uh, well, just stress. I got stress now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me what happened to the marriage? So once I flew down and made plans, we were actually doing, taking this step to get together. That's when we made the drive, the car breaks down, and we got this rental car, and it's like, like she said, it's a lot of stress, because when Y'all really when tripping we got, over this car. I do no, not no, no, understand. Oh. No, it's like when we, got, when we got back to Seattle, like, I work, and I'm the only one who works, so I have to take the car, the only car that we have currently, uh -huh. to go to work. And she stresses out a lot, because, you know, she doesn't really know a lot of people in Seattle, and I'm gone at work. Again, I, like, I'm a DJ, so I'm gone late night. You know, I get back early morning. And, um, you know, she feels that I leave her stranded while, like, while I'm gone at work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, like, I'll leave. Do you feel stranded? I mean, you, you left Las Vegas. You're living in a whole new place. You don't know anybody. Has that been, has that been a difficult transition for you? Yes. I would probably not be making it up if I said that... It's almost that every night, you know, uh, there's some party somewhere and you can't always be, you know, it's just, it's tiring to go to a different party every night. And also, like, everybody has things they need to do or they want to do. And um, I understand that it's fun and everything and I want him to have fun, yet um, not every party goes to, like... Um, I don't so know, six he's a in DJ, the and what you're saying to me is he goes out every day DJing. Almost, not every day, but almost every day. But every you feel, night, a, every, you well, feel every a bit day. abandoned? Do I feel abandoned? No, I feel stranded. I, I'd like to be able to go and do things. I think he would be happier with what he's doing because it would be for a certain reason. I think most people, when given a con concrete goal, um, actually, you think a uh, yacht is a concrete goal? I mean, you guys are struggling to take care of the car. Mr. Duncan, you say your wife is spoiled. Why don't you tell me why you believe that? Um, well, as it stands, like, I pay all the bills. I'm the only one who's working. Right. And uh, we're currently staying uh, with a family member. And... Uh, with your family? Yes, uh -huh. my family. And uh, I'm in the process of uh, saving money so we can move into a new spot. And uh, I guess, yeah, she's, uh, she gets what she wants in the sense that she gets upset if she doesn't. Uh, Give me some like, examples. Like, uh, <laughs> tell, me, tell me a story. Okay, so when I'm leaving to go to, to, go to work, first off, she's upset because I'm leaving her stranded. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, She'll, like, she'll ask me for, for money. I, mm -hmm. I'll ask her for what. She won't tell me what. She just wants money. And I'll tell her, well, I'm trying to save money so we can move into a spot. I have to pay for a car that broke down. I have to, you know, here's all these costs that I'm covering. Mm -hmm. What do you want money for? We don't have a ton um, of money. I, can I say something? I'm going to let you respond. He's, okay. He's, he's, he's almost on a roll. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I want to get, you know... Um, do you believe that she wants money for frivolous things? Because you can't just be broke and have no money. I know no she money. wants money for frivolous things. Such as? Uh, candles, um, manicures, uh, uh, what's another good one? Um, you say that she <laughs> randomly gets angry because she sees amazing things on social media, like yachts and exotic location, and she's wondering why oh, she yeah. doesn't have those things. That would have been the first thing out of my mouth if really? I was talking about... Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but does she do that? Yeah, totally. You know, she'll, she'll come at me like, hey, like, why aren't we doing this? Like, why are, you know, we're wasting the best years of our life. Like, when I'm just trying to get things together. Like, I'm trying to work to, like, get us a free place to stay, you know? What's your version of, of, of that <sighs> concern? Hmm. Well... Where do we start? I wanted... I have asked him for money because... 
I want to go grocery shopping because he eats crap all the time and he's pre-diabetic and he can't eat crap all the time because he's gonna die. Mr. Duncan, is she, is she trying to get money to buy food to keep you healthy? You know, I give her money for groceries and I ask her before I go to the grocery store what she wants and she's... Oftentimes she says, oh, I'll pick it up later. Don't worry about it. Yes, because I know he's going to get crap when he goes to the grocery store, so I want to go, go myself to so I can get Why something Why can't she go decent. to the grocery store? Exactly. She can. Uh-huh. She goes with me, like, it, sometimes. And he's in a rush. If he sees me looking, picking out what fruit or vegetables to get, he gets in a rush. Like, he has to go all of a sudden. It stresses him out. Why do you go? Why do you go? To, why don't you just let her go to the grocery store by herself? Give her I, some money and let her go. I do. She has. She has. Yeah. I haven't even once. You people are killing me. <laughs> I just want to say that. <laughs> Did you hear what I said about you know you seeing things on social media, exotic locations and yachts? Do you wonder why you don't have those things? No, not really. I mean, I like to use these things as motivation, as, you know, there's a lot of things uh, that a person can use as motivation when they don't feel as excited about what they have to do. And I, I mean, I don't like doing laundry, but I do laundry. So if, like, thinking of a yacht to, you know, do something helps get you to do it, then why not? So you think if you point out to him the things that you can have if you were living large, he would work a little harder? No, I think he would be happier with what he's doing because it would be for a certain reason. I think most people, when given a con concrete goal, um, actually... You think a yacht is a concrete goal? I mean, you guys are struggling to take care of the car. I know, but you have to dream big. <laughs> Like, I think I have, you know, the goals in mind. It's like I have realistic, like, ideas for what needs to be done with the money that I make and the bills that I have to pay, you know? It's like I'm not, I'm not stressing about broccoli or, like, you know, whatever. Like, the only reason why she even knows that I'm pre-diabetic is because she made me get uh, STD checks to make sure I wasn't cheating while we were long distance, mm -hmm. which came up negative, but the doctor was like, oh, but you're at risk for diabetes. But, you, but, but isn't that a good thing? That's, that you know, that's, that's what, you know, when, when men get married, they live an average of three years longer. We don't live any longer, but y'all do, because yeah. we take care of you. We, we, we make you go to the doctor. <laughs> we go in there, you just think you, we make you eat right. We do all that kind of good stuff for you. Right. When I'm at work, she's texting me every, like, 20 minutes. I am texting him every 20 minutes because I don't know if he's alive, if something went wrong, if... Does he text you back? Yes, unless he's upset and he's trying to prove a point. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Don't forget to join the conversation on social media. Go to facebook.com slash divorcecourt and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at divorcecourt. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at divorcecourt. You had something you wanted to say, Ms. I wanted to say that uh, the reason, um, as he put us on the spot, about um, having to go to the... or me forcing him to go to the doctor, um, it was also because a lot of times his explanations aren't exactly adding up. He would say, I'm taking care of things, I am running errands, I my favorite, I got stuck talking. And really, there is no no specific uh, purpose or no specific explanation so as to what he's doing. So he can't account for his time in yes. a meaningful way, and so you were concerned that he might, in fact, be cheating on you. Well, I was just concerned, what is he really doing? It, it could be cheating, it could be he could be at a bar, he could be, 
drinking. Yeah, but making drink. him get an STD test is specifically about cheating. Well, it also is about, you know, the company he keeps. And I don't know these people and what it's they do. It's about what he's doing with the company yeah, he keeps. Yeah, that, that, that concerns you. I'm not you saying say they're he's bad people. I, I just don't know. You just don't know. You say he's controlling, that he can go out whenever he wants to, but when you go out, you have to give him chapter and verse on where you're going, who you're going to be with, and what you're doing. Ex give me an example of of that or explain that to me. If I get dressed to go somewhere and I really have about two people that I know in um, in Seattle mm -hmm. all together. So if I'm going with any one of those two people, as you see, um, it's he'll say something about what I'm wearing and that it's um, it's too revealing or it's too um, provocative and I really don't dress very provocative and he drives around with no shirt on all summer long and it's not even it's not even that hot up there so it's just it's just a way to criticize my uh, my fashion sense I, and my I, sense of style. Are you on her about her clothes if she wears something too revealing? Yeah if she wears like a super low cut shirt or like you know I don't really wear short super skirt low and you know what she she really she's gotten a lot better with it but it's like I don't. No, I haven't gotten any better. We did I have the same clothes. We just don't argue about it as much. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I really don't like, I don't keep tabs on her when she goes out as long as I know that she's with a friend. It's like, yeah, I want her to, you know, text me back when I text her or, you know, pick up when I call. Mm -hmm. But like... Well, when she goes out, do you call and text a lot or you... You, you, you... you know, I, I try to at least ping her every hour or so, you know? Why? That, 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 to me, that reads controlling. It, it. it really does. I mean, well, you got to talk to her every hour when she's not with you? When I'm at work, she's texting me every, like, 20 minutes. No, I am not. Maybe 30. No, when he says he'll be back in 20 minutes, that could mean anything from... It's never 20 minutes. But it's definitely anywhere from an hour to three hours to then God knows what another hour. He picks up cigarettes on the way, or um, or I ask him to pick up something since he's already out. Then that's another hour. So yes, when it's been long past the time when he said then he would gone. come back, yes, then I am texting him every 20 minutes because I don't know if he's alive, if something went wrong. If... Does he text you back? Yes, yes, he does. That's, I mean, Unless he's upset and he's trying to prove a point, and in which case, I just text him like 50 times to like annoy him. <laughs> that'll work. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, it hasn't I mean, worked, that'll annoy he's... him. It, it, it won't solve your problem, but if, if, it if your goal is problem. to annoy him, there you go. <laughs> well, because he's ignoring my texts just to prove a point. Court's in session. Do you come in, take off your clothes, and then say, uh-uh? I do, Your Honor. If you want to touch something, go touch some dishes in there, okay? They got some grease. He's keeping you from getting any action, huh? I thought maybe if I get a girl dog for a guy dog, I could get my girl back and my bed back. Visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Normally, I take the last few moments of any given even matter, and I and I and I and I, I I talk about what I see, what I understand, and how things can I can make things better. I don't know what's going on at you people's house. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if you've ever met each other. I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys ran down the street and you talked to each other, said, "Hey, I hear there's this woman named Lynn Toller. She's got this show. Let's go and freak her out." We're gonna say a whole lot of weird things about one another, and 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 then we're gonna watch her stutter. No, this is. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. I don't know who you people are. I don't know if you people know who you are. I wish you the best of luck, and now I'm going to escape. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> Clementina and Josiah were young. They were in a long distance relationship and those are always difficult to maintain. So they thought the answer to their problem was to get married. And what they didn't do was decide what kind of married they were gonna be. So they got in a car, they broke down and they had one issue after another. She was alone in a city where she didn't have any friends. 
He's got the only car, so they've got stress and disorder. They weren't able to talk about it very well, but that's what was going on. Submit your case at divorcecourt.com.